The first slide. Put it full screen. Put it full screen. Okay, is it not showing? That's that's not the video. Uh, okay. Uh, Nadia, Nadia, please take over. Nadia. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night for everyone who's joining uh, today's conference from different regions. Thank you very much from uh, us for your time to participate in this conference. So before we start our conference, uh, I would like to invite uh, President Lesogo to start with prayer. It's fine. Over to you, President Lesogo. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Can we bow our heads and pray? Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Living God, Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life. Father, we pray that you be with us in this meeting, Father God. Give us wisdom, Heavenly Father. Give us direction, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for a positive meeting, fruitful meeting. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 And then the, those who are not Christians. Yeah. We'll have a moment of silence for them. Okay, <clears throat> let's start our conference today. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm the moderator for today's uh, conference. Uh, my name is Julastina. I'm from Indonesia, Jakarta. I'm a president of Infrastructure Leading Chains Asia. And also I'm a CEO group of Hujan Asset Management Limited and also the co-founder of uh, Amrak Global Minergi. Tonight I'm very grateful to open and to be the moderator for this first session of Infra Infrastructure Leading Chains Forum. Uh, infrastructure leading chain is the inclusiveness by WWLC uh, in the vision to collaborate and sharing knowledge, sharing technology, sharing experience from all the global leaders in the infrastructure sector. We believe that infrastructure uh, play very significant roles uh, to make better life and we want to escalate the infrastructure uh, to the next level that lead to a better changes. 
Our tonight topic is uh, Africa infrastructure in collaboration with the international trade. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome our beloved uh, host for tonight, uh, <coughs> Ambassador Rebecca Morudi from, from South Africa. Uh, President Rebecca is the president of Infrastructure Leading Change Africa, co-founder and director of uh, Lala Tombasana NGO, owner and director of MGR3M company. <clears throat> and tonight we are very pleased to welcome our amazing speaker. We will have uh, four speakers tonight and each of the speaker will have about uh, five to seven minutes to elaborate discussion with our host, uh, Ambassador Rebecca. And please welcome our first speaker, uh, President Philomena Malalane. Without further delaying, I will invite Ambassador Rebecca to start. The time is short now. Over to you, President Rebecca. Thank you, President Trina. Good afternoon, Give, good evening, everyone, uh, all the guests, all the speakers for today. As the president of uh, Infrastructure Africa, I just want to uh, say to all of you today, it's a wonderful session that we are having. As we all know that infrastructure is one of the development sectors that bring everyone together by creating good networking opportunities for investment, promoting economic interaction globally and creating trade amongst us as uh, different uh, countries. I'm confident that this session today will be a base of development of new collaboration, partnership and networking amongst entrepreneurs, SMMEs in Africa and globally. I'm happy that today we are also having our guest speaker, who is uh, Mr. Mulobi, whom we are going to give him uh, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, uh, President Tina, so that we, he can share with us how can, are we going to do the international trade. And I know today with our four speakers, who our own president for WWLC, they are going to share with us a lot about what is happening in their regions and even in their countries. I just want to wish all a good session and even a good luck to our uh, speakers for today. I thank you, President uh, uh, Tina. Thanks. Uh, maybe let me even officially apologize for President Ariana. Tomorrow in Angola, mm -hmm. they're celebrating a peace day. So she's the one who's uh, coordinating for a government uh, program for peace. So she won't be with us today. So we'll have only our three presidents who will be presenting today. I uh, thank you. <clears throat> okay, President Rebecca, thank you very much. So uh, now I welcome our first speaker, President Filomena Malalane from uh, uh, Mozambique. WWLC president from Mozambique. Uh, the time is yours. Uh, please, President Rebecca, if you want to start the discussion. Yeah. Hmm. Not, let's say uh, President Filonoma hmm. lead. Yeah, okay. it's fine. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, everybody. I'm well here from Mozambique. So I'm ready to discuss what you propose for today. And uh, I just uh, want to tell you that uh, I'm trying to do my homework here in Mozambique. It's not easy. As you, you know, we have a lot of problems, but we, we can deal with this problem. There is no way we have to do our effort in order to overcome those challenges that we have here in Mozambique. This is, uh, I have to tell you at the moment. So. If uh, it's necessary, I can go, especially uh, uh, for about what I'm, I've been doing uh, these last days. Thank you. Did you hear me? 
Do you have a, a presentation, President Silanoma? No, I, I didn't make any presentation because what I prepared is for our meeting, our small meeting. Okay. Yeah, maybe what I can share a bit uh, with the, maybe the SADC uh, program when it comes to the infrastructure, I will just share a bit. Like uh, I know with uh, Mozambique, uh, you once sent me your proposal on how uh, the co-products for Mozambique, maybe what can we trade as uh, the goods that can maybe a, any country can trade with you in uh, Mozambique. And uh, maybe you can even just share a brief, uh, what uh, your policy review that the government is doing when it comes to private investment. Yeah, I think those are the key things. Uh, okay. As I told you, we have our legislation that uh, permit all people who want to invest here. Um, I mean, private sector. If you wanted to invest here, it's possible. And we have um, minimum amount of uh, investment for the capital is not, is not defined, but for a, a investment it is. A, you can make it at least 15,000 US dollars. And we have to, we can, we can invest alone and we can join some for to someone if you want. And the, all sectors are open. You are allowed to invest in agricultural sector and even in construction, in, in tourism and, and so on. Uh, so our priority at the moment as a country is uh, agricultural, tourism. This is what we really, we, 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 we we're promoting now at the moment. We have here our national project that it's called Sustenta, which if I, I try to translate could be support and uh, is is dealing with the uh, uh, agricultural and his uh, all China. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, agricultural sector had, uh, as well, and uh, the um, the manufacturing and the transporting of these goods. So, if you want to invest in this area, it's possible to contact with our uh, uh, agricultural minister. To do, to do so, and uh, uh, you can <laughs> do again. Uh, other, we can do other. We can go uh, uh, to other sector uh, for logistic. Uh, as you know, as a SADC, you can join us in this area. We have uh, this sector for infrastructure for manufacturing and the mining sector, it's possible to, 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 to invest in this area for logistic to is necessary in the north of the country. I don't mean here in the south, but in the north of the country, uh, like Tete, Nampula, and Cap Delgado. It's what I, I have to tell you at the moment. Okay, maybe on the challenges that we have as uh, Mozambique when it comes to lack of infrastructure within your uh, country. I know this uh, affects the whole Africa, the infrastructure uh, challenges. So in your country, how do you, how is your country government planning on how to work on that, uh, on how to invest uh, with private uh, investors when it comes to the infrastructure challenges that are there in Mozambique? Uh, the, uh, because of the money that is needed to invest in this area, normally this is the government initiative. And when he needs uh, the private sector to participate, uh, it's uh, making a tender and call to private sector to answer those tenders. And um, some requirements are defined on these standards, and it's why the government used to do so. It's possible to go 
through all sectors to see what is going on at the moment. Uh, because, you know, it's, it's not easy to, 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 to private sector to invest on this it, because it's, it's really for, to construct, I, I mean, roads and the bridge, it's not easy. It, even this principal road that, that connect to, to, to South Africa and the Mozambique has, you know, so-called the N4, it, it has taken a lot of money. So they are private, the private sector is involved in this for 30, for 30 years. After that, the government will, uh, will run this, uh, this infrastructure. At the moment, is a, is is a private tech sector who is uh, who is really in charge of running this infrastructure. So it it will happen the same thing with other uh, infrastructure. So if someone is need to invest on this area, it's possible. I can give you some contacts if you need. Because uh, this this week uh, I I went to the uh, uh, the institute. This is which is in charge of promoting investment, and I I spoke to them. Uh, they told me that it's possible. They are ready to assist any anybody who wants to invest on this, but they need the concrete project the idea must be from who wants to invest on this area. So they are ready to hear what we have to, to give them. They asked me for this, because I understood that it's necessary to, to, to feed you uh, of some ideas or, or for about what it's necessary to do here in Mozambique. It's why I went there to talk to this colleagues who work in this sector. If, if someone wanted to invest on this area, and I, I, I must be a really more clear in order to, 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 to help him, to guide him and to make appointment with those people who can assist him if it's necessary. It what I have to, to, to share with you at, at, the, at the moment. Okay. Yeah, no, thanks, uh, President Pilanama. So this, which means what you are saying now, it covers our question on saying, where do you see that the WWLC can add value in investing in uh, Mozambique? Or do you want to answer it now or maybe during the question and answer Sessions. It, it, this is a, this. It, this is really. Uh, it's the same. If you have investment, even for us, it's possible. But uh, okay. in my opinion, it's possible to invest on this area too. Since uh, someone wants to invest, even for us, it's possible to add our value in this sector. But it, 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 it's 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 as I told you when we are dealing with, uh, when we are dealing about infrastructure, it's just, you know, it's necessary a lot of money. So the government is in charge on this. They uh, used to, ca to call for someone who wanted to invest in this area, but has our initiative to go there, to go there and to invest in the infrastructure without uh, this, uh, uh, without this question from the government. I think it's not easy. It will be not easy. It's possible, but it's not easy because they have some project that they, for, for example, in the north of the country, they want to do, to, to, to launch the project as the Kabora Basa. I don't know how, how to call it, but it's, uh, as you know, this is, uh, is, is not easy for someone who wants to invest in this area without the government being involved on this. But in agricultural sector, it's possible. It has double double LC. It's possible because uh, we can't we can invest on on median project, even small or median project in agriculture. It's possible in tourism. It's possible if you if uh, we have 
we have condition to invest on this area. What we have to need to, 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 to do is to ask exactly what we want, is to have any project that we want to invest here. If we need, for, for, in, for instance, if we need land, for example, I can go through this to get answer if we, we need this. If it, if, it, if it's what the tourism investment, we can do the same. What we have to, to, to do is to, uh, to be clear in what we need. Okay. We can do it, we can do it alone and we, it's possible to do it with, with, with the national uh, citizen. But, uh, but what we need is to, to know exactly what we need, what we want. Because I can't go through these things. I can't go and ask someone if he wanted to join us as an investor without uh, a, 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 what would what 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 how to be clear clear that it's possible to invest on this. On this okay, no, thank you. Yeah, the time is uh, up now. So thank you very much uh, for your presentation, uh, President Philonoma, President uh, Tina. President Ogena, it's uh, in. Yeah, she'll be the next speaker. Okay. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation, uh, President Hilonema. Uh, we will very happy to assist you in this in this uh, 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 presentation that uh, need to, to to follow up. I will I will we will we will follow up on that. And the next speaker will be. Uh, 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 Mrs. Ogena Walter Ekwuburi from Nigeria. Uh, she's the CEO of Havila Walter uh, Limited and also founder Motivating African Youth Initiative. Please welcome uh, Ms. Mrs. Ogena. The time is yours. Over to you. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello, Mr. Ogena. Your 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 voice your voice is breaking. Voice is breaking, Mr. Ogina. Mrs. Ogina. Hello. Madam Ogina. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. I think you still have a signal. Problem in right. that? I think it's the network. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, but not mm -hmm. clearly. You can speak again so that we can say you are clear. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you. Now. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. I can. We can yes. hear you now. Yeah. Yes, please proceed. Uh, President Rebecca. Oh, shit. I think it's better now. Yeah, it's better. You can continue, President Ogena. Do you have a presentation? Hello. Or... Yeah, President Ogena, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? I can. Yes, I can. can hear, hear you clearly. We can hear you too. Okay, can I disconnect and reconnect? You can hear, we can hear you. Oh, great. We can so this is one of the problems we have. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. you can start. Good yeah. afternoon, good morning, good evening. Okay, my name is Ogin Nawalta Ekuburi, and I represent... All right. No. Yes, I can hear you. 
I can hear you clearly. Yeah, you okay, can continue. So, um, all right, good afternoon, like I said. Uh, yeah, she's uh, connecting, I think, we, I think. Yeah, I think we uh, uh, lost uh, Madam Ogena. So maybe we going to move to our next speaker and going back to Madam Ogena when he can connect again. Okay. Uh, so our our Are next it? our next speaker. It's uh, President Lewis, but I don't, I don't see whether she's in with another number. What? It's President Lewis. Is it Pre President Lewis here? Ah. Okay, we can go to Mr. Sol. President okay. Logena will present afterwards. She's, she just sent a message that she's mm. reconnected. Yeah. Okay. Oh, she's in. Yeah, she's <laughs> in now. Yeah. President Logena. Hello. Yes, we can hear you now. Your voice. Sorry. Yes, please. Okay. Can we can we move to uh, the next speaker first, and we can get back to uh, Madam Ogena later on. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Let let. Welcome uh, our next speaker, uh, Mr. Saul Molobi. He's the chairman and also CEO of uh, Brand Hill Africa, public diplomacy expert, trade and investment marketing, global marketing diplomacy, former South Africa consul, and publisher of the digital magazine Jumbo Africa. Please welcome. Mr. Saul Malobi, the time is yours. Over to you, Mr. Saul. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm trying to get the video and also to share my presentation with you. I'm putting it on the on the screen. Yes. You can you can share your screen, Mr. Saul. It's coming. Hmm. Is it there? Yes, we can yes. see that. I can. Hmm. Um the title of my presentation is Graven Thee Upon the Palm of My Hand, Brand Africa, Digital Convergence, and the Delivery of Tomorrow's Economy Today. Um, this, this is a, a quotation from Isaiah. Uh, Anyway, I thought it could be appropriate because it's Sunday today. But for me, it speaks to the centrality of mobile technology in, in our lives today. The cell phone and all the other mobile gadgets are running our lives. But in this context, uh, it speaks to to even the challenges that we are facing as Africa, the challenges of developing our ICT infrastructure, 
And I thought this could be interesting to this gathering because it is all about infrastructure development across the entire continent as a driver of our economic growth. Sorry, Mr. So, uh, if I can interrupt it. Uh, could you please uh, put on the slide presentation mode? Because this one is still in the... Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Is it better? Yes, this is better. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Um, for us to, to be part as, as a continent, to be part of the fourth industrial revolution, we need rare exceptional skills. And I thought perhaps I could start by, by quoting Thomas Sankara. Uh, who said, open quote, you cannot carry out fundamental change without a certain amount of madness. In this case, it comes from nonconformity, the courage to turn your back on the old formulas, the courage to invent the future. It took the madmen of yesterday for us to be able to act with extreme clarity today. I want to be one of those made men. We must dare to invest the future. For me, this is extremely excellent because as if she was paraphrasing uh, Thomas Sankara, the Egyptian feminist Nawal El Sadawi in 1993, here in South Africa at the New Nation Writers Conference declared that Creativity starts with disobedience. And being a consumer of all things Apple, I was very much inspired by the biography of Stephen Jobs, who also alluded to this concept of, of craziness. And then he said, he said, these crazy ones have no respect for the status quo as they push the human race forward. And I was glad last year the Harvard Business Review acknowledged this nonconformist as people who are very necessary to drive cutting edge technology and innovations in our companies and in our countries and across our continents and referred to this rare breed of people as possessing a rebel talent. To these crazy ones, one plus one will never be two, but it will always be three. It is unfortunate that this exceptional talent in our countries, particularly in Africa, it is often discouraged by, by patronage, in some instances, even political repression, and even torture and, and terrorism. But I then decided to look at the evolution of epistemologies which should, in, should inform us in Africa as we begin to understand the situation we are currently in and we chart the way forward. I wouldn't go much into this, but basically they start with Chekanta Diop looking at pre-colonial Africa, repositioning Africa as the cradle of, of, of civilization. And later on, a white American academic wrote a book called Black Athena. And he was basically reinforcing and confirming and affirming what mm -hmm. Sheikh Anta Diop has, um, has always been uh, preaching, especially in his doctoral thesis, which was rejected by the US uh, uh, um, universities 
until only UNESCO quoted him largely in the uh, UNESCO um, History of Africa volumes. Is then that they awarded him that doctorate. But Martin Bellan, when he was ostracized and marginalized by the white establishment in Europe and the US, decided to write a book revising his original Black Athena. And he said it's Black Athena revisited, basically distorting everything that he said in his book. And from there, you will look at national liberation movements. In South Africa, we had Priestley Kaisaka Seme. Then there was Kwame Nkrumah in 1963, his speech leading to the formation of the African uh, Organization for African Unity, which today we call uh, African Union. In South Africa, uh, in 1955, we adopted the Freedom Charter, but one good thing about the Freedom Charter is that it then began to talk about the concept of non-racialism. In this instance, then later on, the Communist Party of South Africa came up with a coinage called colonialism of a special type. All these philosophies, even though they were dependent on, to a large extent, um, dialectical materialism, but they heeded to a call made by Moses Kotani, who was one of the leaders of the ANC, in his credo letter, who said, you can't just adopt all these international epistemologies without customizing them to the African condition that in, under which we are living. And basically then that's why in South Africa, the National Liberation adopted, broadly adopted um, a two-faced theory where they said for the first stage, we will be dealing with the problem of colonialism, of racism, and then perhaps after we have achieved our national liberation is then that we can begin to talk about a socialist revolution. Um, I'm a student of what is known as a uh, nation branding and the term is now contested. Um, Simon Arnold has referred to it as competitive identity. And S Simon Arnold last year went further to come up with what he called um, a good country index. So with me, I still subscribe to the concept of competitive identity where we say, what is it that a country or a place or a continent need to do to brand position themselves as viable destinations for tourism and investment, and at the same time, brand position their products so that they could be able to access international markets. Now, if you look at the past 20 years, uh, when this concept of nation brand was first conceptualized, the themes that you get in, in, in the literature, um, basically there are four. And the first one relates to a country image, any country's image, uh, because the image that consumers have of a country will ultimately impact on their perceptions of everything and everybody else who comes from that specific country. For instance, in South Africa, um, some years ago, when we were opening our trade to, to all the countries, unfortunately then our people began to identify China with, with cheap fake products. And one musician locally ended up uh, releasing a song called Fong Kong, basically meaning you are not wearing the, the legitimate stuff. So that's how powerful um, the, a country's country Im, uh, image will impact on consumer perceptions of products and everybody coming from that specific uh, place. The second theme identified is that of a personality. 
um, if you look at so, so the evolution of South Africa's personality um, from Mandela, it was a bit of informal, human-centered, all embracing. And President Mbeki came in more like an English gentleman and then President Zuma came in, who was regarded then as a man of the people who was accessible to, to, to everyone. And now we have President uh, Ramaphosa. I'm aware that I haven't spoken about President Motlante because he came in for less than a year. But President Ramaphosa is now evoking um, that intellectual culture that had died in, in the past 10 years. And he's now coming back to say, as a business person, in fact, even our foreign policy should be speaking mainly to economic diplomacy before we can begin to talk about other forms of relationships that we should be getting into. Then the other one looks at a country's reputation and the last theme is on how strong your nation brand is, uh, how strong um, and how many people across the world have bought into the kind of competitive identity that your country has forged. But all these epistemologies are Westocentric, they are Eurocentric in the sense that they are now inculcating uh, Western Europe as the barometer for, for, for standards. And we are beginning to question that if you go back to the slide about political epistemologies, then you will also look at various uh, 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 shades of Pan-Africanism and what Steve Biko ultimately called black consciousness. Brand Africa is under siege uh, in 1899, Joseph Conrad wrote a novel called Heart of Darkness that basically uh, classified Africa as a dark continent. Um, uh, it deliberately ignoring all the other forms of civilizations that had emerged out of Africa. If you look at Ethiopia and other kingdoms uh, in Egypt and across the continent as a whole. They even ignored the fact that some of the Western scholars came to study in Egypt and went back and recorded their experiences from Africa. Simon Anhold says, today Germany is known for its engineering, France with its cheek, Japan with miniaturization, Italy with flair, Sweden with design, Britain with class, Switzerland with precision, but Africa is known for famine, disease, and terror. Over 100 years after the, the, public, the publishing of The Heart of Darkness, in, in, in 2018, President Donald Trump referred to, and I will quote him verbatim because I'm talking to others. He said Africa and Haiti were shithole countries. And in response to this, the University of Southern California released a study on the 4th of February, 2019, that revealed that since President Trump's statement, Americans seldom saw mentions of Africa or Africans on popular television shows or in the news. And when they do, the portrayals are often negative and stereotyped. Hence, the university established what they call the African narrative, which is an initiative aimed at harnessing the arts, media, enter entertainment, business, education, and philanthropy to engage the world in new stories of modern Africa. We may remember what Chimamanda Ngozi said, warning us about the danger of a single story. Because she said, a single story creates stereotypes. And the problem with stereotypes is not that they are untrue, 
but that they are incomplete. They make one story become the only story. Socrates wrote some uh, centuries ago that the way to gain a reputation is to endeavor to be what you desire to appear. Auntie Felicia Mabuza some years ago, after returning to the country, ran an excellent uh, 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 program on TV. And she always said, if you don't have it, fake it. Even though I may not necessarily agree with the fake part, but it is important that you always portray what you desire people to be seeing uh, about, about you. But at the same time, like I've already said, with my political upbringing, I grew up in the world where dialectical materialism was our primary epistemology. I would say that the Africa I'm talking about shouldn't be um, your, your, your ethnic Africa. It shouldn't be about us going back to our roots. It is Africa within the context of global community where we do acknowledge the fact that we have impacted on other cultures and similarly those cultures have also impacted on us. Uh, Gupta um, uh, indicates that this could be called what is uh, a, a transvergent culture. In Marxism Leninism we say is the synthesis of all the different cultures that were integrated antagonistic to each other, then they found common ground and they produce a, a completely more advanced culture, which is centered on the core from which it, it emerged from. Stuart Hall says, our culture has to look at what we have become as a people. So this is the Africa I'm talking about. And I'm saying, uh, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement has to be our delivery platform as we try uh, our level best to implement Agenda 2063. Africa is a very large continent. I deliberately decided to use uh, this map, which caused some controversy some time ago. But basically, it says, geographically, we are the biggest continent. And you have all these other continents that could be uh, even countries that could be accommodated all in one Africa. In 2002, Max Shuttleworth took a trip into the space and when he came back, everybody was highly excited about him. I was equally excited, but I loved one thing from him. He said, when you are up there and you are looking at, at, at the earth, there is nothing that gives you the impression that Africa should always be at the top. And I took that to heart and then I said, perhaps this is how we should be imagining Africa. Africa being at the top and all other countries which are in the, in the north come down to the south and that will give us some form of superiority uh, in terms of our thinking. In fact, uh, you may remember the movie, uh, Dead Poets Society, where this nonconformist teacher went into a classroom and asked all his students uh, to, to climb on top of the desks and to look at their classroom and the world outside their classrooms from a fresher perspective. And I thought perhaps as Africa, we should begin to adopt this kind of a map where Africa is in the north 
and the countries that are in the south all come down to the north so that ultimately we could assert our, our intellectual superiority as a continent. I said I'll talk about ICT and here are the, the statistics. And surprise, surprise to South Africans. In fact, there are six. In fact, there, there, there are six to eight countries in Africa who are doing very well, far much better than South Africa when it comes to internet connectivity. But unfortunately, despite this dramatic growth over the past decade, only a quarter of Africans are connected to the internet, leaving the majority of consumers unable to shop online at home, accessing free, uh, free government delivery services. And we have seen that happening, especially during the past six, six months in South Africa, when the country was under lockdown. Those who do not have access to internet couldn't accept uh, e-government services as provided by our government. Africa is bringing together, uh, the, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement is bringing together all the 54 um, African Union member states. Even though we need to, to be talking as a single voice because we are a, 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 a free trade area, we also need to take into consideration the fact that um, uh, I said I'm, I'm a Marxist. There's one principle that says unity and struggle of the opposite. To say that we are forging for a continental unity. At the same time, we will be dealing with the reality on the ground that faces us all the time. And it goes back to what Waina Wina Binyang in Kenya, who said that Africa isn't a country. But at the same time, we are saying, strategically, we are looking at Africa being uh, constituting the biggest um, uh, 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 economic region in the entire continent. And it will even be bigger than, than the European Union. The objectives of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement is to drive intra-African trade among our countries. The World Bank is saying uh, it is now sitting at 14%. The formulators of the, the Continental Free Trade Agreement came up with a figure of a target of 50% uh, trade being achieved by 2020, 2022, excuse me. But unfortunately, this was before the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. So my guesstimate will be that we could reach that um, uh, in the next four to five years. And yet at the same time, you also have to understand that, and that's why I love about this conference, is that infrastructure has to be given uh, because trade is to a large extent dependent upon the availability of, of infrastructure across the continent. One economist did the study that you produce a product in South Africa, you want to export it into Niger, but that product will go into a cargo flight to Paris from Paris back into Africa in Niger. And he said, by the time that product reaches Niger, because there, there are no direct uh, transport links between South Africa and Niger, the cost for that product has already increased by over 350%, which means that our products may not be in a position uh, to, to, to use price as a competitive measure against products that are imported into the continent from particularly your 
South, Southern uh, European states. Again, ICT infrastructure means that if all of us have access to internet connectivity, then digital trade will, will, will thrive across the continent and as it will also defy our physical borders. Opportunities for creating digital, uh, digital work in Africa lies mainly in, in these three sectors, globally traded services, labor absorbing platforms like your call centers and the frontier technology hub. The imperatives for achieving Africa digital prosperity are centered mainly on your universal digital inclusion, your government support, your innovative business and your human capital. From this slide, the most important takeaway for us is that most digital platforms in Africa right now are owned and run by Africans. And one of our, our, our best ICT uh, companies, uh, your, your communications company is your, your, your NASPERS, which owns a stake in, in China's Tencent and they're reaping of benefits from that investment that they made in, in, in China. I'm just rushing against time now. Um, we, with this one, we will look in South Africa, um, the recent incident three, four weeks ago, when one of our credit uh, credit bureaus uh, had their ICT system compromised and as a result um, customer information was distributed across the world. The investigations are still continuing but unfortunately this means that our people will be too skeptical uh, to use your, your, your online trading because they'll be very worried about the, the information. My recommendation, which I gave in my dissertation in 2016, and I've just discovered that in fact, uh, they are more than as relevant as they were in, in 2016, is that we need to adopt digital platforms and through digital platform, we should be able to conduct customer research, segmentation of our markets. Um, our targeting will be much better and we reposition ourselves as an Africa that is on the rise. I've already indicated that economic diplomacy is now the key component of international relations across the country. It's not, only in our, it's not only in our case where we have uh, a president who is highly economic literate because he's a former business person, but you also look at um, President Trump, what he is doing, um, defending um, uh, uh, um, American trade to an extent that some of us even believe that he, he, he borders on transgressing some of the regulations of the World Trade Organization. Uh, the latest controversy in the news now is the shutting down of TikTok in, in the US, uh, which is a cause for concern for all of us who have interest in, in global trade. We need to know our stakeholders and we need to engage them uh, every second of our time and digital communications is the best platform to be able to do that. We need efficient uh, customer relationship management systems that should allow us to be able to communicate with our, our customers. In fact, 
uh, the most difficult market that one can go into is Japan. And the reason is because you, you have only seven families that are controlling the Japanese economy and they call them the Kirauti. And what they do is that if you were to enter the Japanese market, they will lower their prices and six months down the line, you shall have priced yourself out of the market. That's where online trading is very important because then you will be able to access the Japanese market. In conclusion, what we do at Brand Hill Africa is that we brand position products, companies, and even in individuals by conducting market research, developing and implementing brand strategies for them. We open global market access for these brands because we can't just brand you and leave you there. We make sure that we brand you so that you could be able to access the markets. We re engineer the reputation of brands, um, uh, the latest uh, company to re-engineer its brands in South Africa is PEP. They have received positive uh, feedback and naturally some, 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 some customers are not very happy with, with what they have done. But the importance of, of rebranding yourself is that if you look at KFC, uh, in fact, they will threaten to sue you today if you were to call them Kentucky Fried Chicken, even though when they began their name in full was Kentucky Fried Chicken, because now in the world in which we are now emphasizing healthy lifestyles, anything fried is seen as unhealthy. For that reason, that's why they call themselves um, a KFC. In South Africa and across the continent, we have APSA. Um, APSA used to be called, when they launched it, it's an, it's an acronym, uh, which means Amalgamated Banks of South Africa. But because they are now looking at establishing a continental footprint after buying um, Batley's, they are now calling themselves APSA. And to them, APSA is no longer an acronym but it is their full name. We have just launched a digital publication called Jumbo Africa Online on September 1, and it's available online. And you can also send an email. We will be able to email you the digital publication. We are also brand positioning a very interesting company owned by a young woman uh, called Made by Coco. They are producing cosmetics, including sanitizers. She also employs the youth. A very good company that deserves support from all of us as a country and also as a continent. Their website is over there. Um, my dissertation is focusing on developing a a brand development framework for made in Africa. And I'm going to use South African wine as a case study. So I've started engaging with a woman owned wine brand in Pretoria called Tipeli Wines. And they are doing extremely well, more especially that uh, they are based in, in Gauteng, which is inland and not in the Western Cape but also that she's also part of the cohort of, of black women who are now beginning to enter into the, the, the wineries and the wine industry, and they're doing very well. Uh, one other company is the Bridge Wine of Hope owned by Rosemary Musia. There's the Seven Sisters, former farm workers who, took, uh, who came together and took a stake in a company and they are now running a very successful uh, wine brand across the world. And the Mandela family, Ausmaki, um, they've established a wine brand called Madiva. King Zelitin has also partnered with some other guys and they, they produce a wine brand. So gradually we are making inroads. And my study now looks at how do we brand them in such a way that 
these products could uh, compete successfully with products from Italy and also from France. And by the way, when during my diplomatic posting in Italy, when I wanted to upset the Italians, I used to say to them that, for instance, in 2015, South Africa exported 5.6 million liters of wine into the European Union, but only 10% of this figure was branded and bottled. Then I used to say to them, because we cannot afford, uh, we, we can account for the 90% that was exported into, into, into the European Union in bulk, what happened to those wines? Which means that some of the Italian and the French and the German wines that you are enjoying are basically South African wines that left our shores in bulk and they got bottled and branded in the European Union uh, member states. And it's a fact. And now this study will also be looking at, at that. We are now in the process of organizing. Good a afternoon, Sahul. <laughs> How are you, my brother? Hello. 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 I think uh, A10, Galaxy A10, can you mute your mic, Mr. Mulubi? I have muted him. I think I've muted him. Yeah. You are towards conclusion. Eh? We okay. just added your time, but can you maybe wrap up? Okay. In fact, this is my last point. We are now in the process of establishing a Silicon E Villages, which will be a virtual holistic training program aimed at developing ICT entrepreneurs in rural areas, uh, particularly in your mining communities. Okay, thank you so much for your the time you afforded me. And here's my contact details. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mulobi. I think there's a lot. Wow. That, uh, wow, yeah, wow, 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 wow. With us, uh, maybe we'll have uh, questions and inputs. Can we now maybe, without any waste of time, we uh, have uh, President Ogena to present and after we'll have questions and inputs. Yeah. President Ogena, I, we hope now you're, yeah, you are in. President Ogena? Yes, please. Yeah, we can hear you well now. You can continue, President Ogena. Right, so my name is Ogena Walter Ekuberi. I am a Nigerian and I'll be speaking um, for the Nigerian and indeed the West African region. So as you know, West Africa is the westernmost region of Africa. The United Nations defines West Africa as it is made up of 16 countries, namely Bene, Burkina Faso, Cape Verde, the Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Liberia, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Togo. West Africa is famous for her cultural diversity and rich Asian history. West Africa is more culturally diverse than the whole of Asia. Nigeria, where I come from, has over 500 plus languages with our colonial language, English, known as the lingua franca. With a land area of over 5.1 million square meters, it has an estimated population of, of about 400 million people making it's the third populous region in the world. Amazingly, about 70% of the population are below the age of 30. Most of the West African countries depend on mineral deposits such as oil, 
gold, and so on to grow their economies. More than 50% of the population are engaged in subsistence farming. Nigeria has the largest economy in this region and is making remarkable progress in other sectors, such as telecommunications, film, and the music industries. Our opportunities include a young population, vast mineral deposits, vast arable land, and most importantly, a large market for commodities and consumables. According to Wikipedia at the 2006 census, the city of Abuja, where I reside, which is the administrative capital of Nigeria, has a population of about 776,298 people, making it one of the 10 most populous cities in Nigeria. According to the United Nations, Abuja grew by 109.7% between 2000 and 2010, making it the fastest growing city in the world. As of 2015, the city is experiencing an annual growth of at least 35%, retaining its position as the fastest growing city in the African continent and one of the fastest growing cities in the world. As of 2016, the metropolitan area of Abuja is estimated at 6 million persons, placing it behind only Lagos as the most populous metro area in Lagos. The major challenges to our growth as a region and development include political instability, like the case in Mali as of today, poor leadership, weak institutions, corruption, unemployment, illiteracy, poverty, women marginalization, insecurity, ethnicity, religiosity, over-dependence on imperial powers, and most importantly, poor infrastructure, which is limiting interregional trade and frustrating industrialization, which is why we are here today. The World Women Leading Change Forum, which has shown immense interest in the development of Africa, can be instrumental in advancing the West African region particularly by supporting legislations that would empower women to participate in governance and policy making, support girl child education, I beg your pardon, organizing and empowering women youths through vocational skills and entrepreneurship, and most importantly, by bridging the housing deficit gap through the provision of affordable mass housing. And I will tell you how. Decades of neglect in the provision of public infrastructure in Nigeria by successive governments has put the nation's development and economic prospect in jeopardy. You would agree with me that despite the amazing benefits we have as a country, the apparent decay of our infrastructural sector leaves more to be desired. The government has opened up her arms to public-private partnerships, which is one major way in which the WWLC can come in. You can either choose to A, rehabilitate, lease, operate, and transfer, build, operate, and transfer, rehabilitate, build, operate, and or transfer, or design, build, finance, operate, and transfer. The region with Nigeria as a case study suffers mainly electricity, transportation, communication, and education. In electricity, we have gas, petroleum deficit. In transportation, we have roads, rail system, aviation, and ports. In communication, we have mass media, internet, which I am currently suffering from, <laughs> and the postal. And of course, in education, we have all forms of education with all levels of schools. As you would agree with me, as with everything in life, there are pros and cons. It takes her energy, power, infrastructure. Today, the government of my country is looking into building more real systems to alleviate poverty and to also see to the 
faster movement of goods and services from one place to another. Water and sanitation infrastructure, irrigation, water pipelines, and so on are also in the kitty. Health infrastructure from primary, secondary, and tertiary healthcare services in my country and in the West African region leaves much more to the desired. Finally, the housing deficit. President Ogena, are you still in? Hello, sorry, you lost me for a moment. It's the network, yeah, sorry. We... Sorry, the network is, is not so good today. It rained all through yesterday, so I apologize. Okay, so in the face of increasing budgetary constraint, constraint population growth, greater expectation and demand from Nigeria, the government is under huge pressure from her citizenry to deliver new and robust infrastructure. However, the huge financial outlay required to meet this demand far outstrip the resources available to the government. It is pertinent to emphasize that the future of Nigeria as an, as an emerging economy depends on its ability to build and modernize her infrastructure. In its resolve to tackle this crisis, the Nigerian government in 2013 put together an ambitious 30-year plan known as National Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan. It focuses on core infrastructure, including energy, power, oil and gas, transportation, road, rail, ports and airports, housing, water, and the ICT. The plan is expected to run from 2013 to 2043 and is estimated to cost about $3 trillion million. $3 trillion, I beg your pardon. The breakdown of the plan shows that energy will go up about $1 billion, transportation will go up about $775 billion, agriculture, water and mining about $400 billion, housing and regional development about $350 billion, and the ICT about $325 million. Social infrastructure, such as hospitals and the likes, about $150 billion, and vital registration and security, about $50 billion. Now, in conclusion, I know that the WWLC is looking to invest in Africa in Nigeria and in the West African region. And as an entity which is looking at making profit, not just for the organization, but also for the benefit of those who are involved in the movement and for women the world over. I believe that investing in the infrastructural deficits in Africa, in the Western African region would see to amazing profit margin for the organization and for the women in the region. Thank you. Okay, thank wow. you very much. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, great. President Tina, Anna. you can continue maybe with questions, inputs. Okay, thank you very much for the speaker to uh, Mr. Sol and also uh, President Ogena, this is a very inspiring and excellent presentation from you. So uh, uh, let's invite uh, any question from the participant. Is, if there are uh, any uh, question you want to uh, raise for the speakers? Oh, I'm eating. Yes, I've got a question. Yes, I'm Debbie Dineo Raputi, and thank you very much for such informed uh, presentation. I'll, first, I'll, my question will be directed to President Philonoma. Uh, President Philonoma, you said that 
we can come and invest in Mozambique. Yes. Investing in Mozambique, what are the requirements, uh, especially with the government, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, processes, what is ex expected? Me coming from South Africa, am I allowed to really in do such, to do big uh, investment in, in Mozambique? I thank you. And then the other question, uh, it's been directed to um, our diplomat, Mr. Saul Mulubi, uh, our ward, we name it after Mr. Eric Mulubi. Uh, I think really this Mulubis, they are great people. And thank you so much, uh, our diplomat, our excellency, Ntate Mulubi. You could see that Ogena, when she was trying to speak, there were such a lot of you know, of challenges. And we really want to, you know, um, we, we can see that we are having common challenges in Africa. And with this COVID-19, uh, uh, you know, this enemy, and we saw that the world became very, you know, it was not as vast as we thought, but it became so, we became so closer to each other. And the most important thing that really make us closer, it is the connectivity, the, uh, the ICT, and, and looking at the security. If the security can be breached, what measurement can be employed, you know, to ensure that we've got the best uh, uh, connectivity in Africa? And when we are looking at the agenda 2063, uh, the Africa that we want, it also address the issue of uh, the Africa uh, that needs to be, um, they, it talks about inclusive, inclusive growth and sustainable development. And this inclusive growth, how can we be able to achieve it? And really, Ndate Mulubi, we want that you should assist the World Women Leading Change. We want to work with you. We want that you must hold our hands and walk this Africa with you, the Africa we want. I thank you. Can I, can I answer President Debbie? Maybe before you answer, let's get the other questions so that when you answer, it's one round and then we close. Can we have maybe other people maybe having inputs or questions? But we want to see, I'm sorry, President Rebecca, through you, we want to see we want to see you, yeah, Mulubi, we please. Answer. Yeah. Can we, we want help to see maybe? you? Yeah, President. I, I'm, I'm here. I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Presentina, maybe just take other two people and then we, yeah, we have President Ayla and then we'll have our speakers uh, responding. Okay, maybe uh, we welcome uh, President Ayla if you have any comment or a question to the speaker. Uh, I just want to uh, say thank you for all the speaker. My name is Ayla. And as I was uh, predicted uh, before I come into Africa, actually uh, it's the same that uh, Mr. Paul shared that the most valuable thing that you have in your life is your brand. You as a brand, and then you bring it to your company and then you bring it to your country. 
and then you bring it to the world. Brand is so important because it's tangible asset. And thank you, Mr. Saul, that you uh, uh, touch that ground of branding because not many people understand that, for example, Africa is leading the biggest cocoa importer for the world with Indonesia, right? Um, it's from Ivory Coast. But why there is no uh, cocoa factory there? Why we never know? If you, if you think of cocoa, they should think Ivory Coast. Not think of uh, Delphi, not think of Silver Queen, they are the producer. Think of cocoa, think of Ivory Coast. And infrastructure is the most important thing to have. That's why when I started, I asked President Alice to lead Africa because as one country in Africa, you can never survive during this pandemic. In fact, as the world today, as one country, you could never survive. And that is why we need unity and collaboration. And we need to install the trust to, to the world that it is safe to invest in Africa. You will deal with a good people because it's trust. Brand is trust. If you meet people, you trust them, that's it, you do business with them. But development of trust, we need to instill from, for example, that if you go to London, there is no surprise you will find. As a consultant, you will have similar conduct of act, of ethical conduct, and they can take out your, what you call it, your license if you doing such an uh, ethical thing. And when, you, when you're out of London, when you are of United Kingdom, you're, you're basically, you know, they have everything open in the internet, your company, your criminal records, everything. So if you, if you do bad conduct, they take your license because you cannot do bad conduct in consulting, for example, that's, standardiz that's standardization. So this is our homework and especially Homework of President Lesejo, yes, branding, branding Africa. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, comment and also insight, uh, uh, President Ayla. Uh, I see the raised hand from Chipo Chipitsa. Uh, do you want to raise any? Question. Um, hi, um, thank you very much for letting me speak. Um, I got in, I only got in at four because unfortunately I only saw the notification on uh, Brussels um, status say at four o'clock. So I missed most of, um, of this presentation. I hope I can be able to listen to it later. But my, my contribution and perhaps my question really is about um, marrying everything that is being done here by this um, very uh, illustrious group of people to working with and, and, and promoting the rule of law in Africa. Um, I just want to understand, um, perhaps I could direct this to um, the the chairman and chief executive, Mr. Molovi, how, how you are going about in promotion of these big brands, how you're going about marrying all of that with the rule of law in the different, especially in our continent as Africa and in the different countries specific, specifically, and perhaps also in the different blocks of Africa, you will find that some blocks are more progressive than others. East Africa being, um, in my opinion, quite, um, uh, quite uh, uh, advanced in, in the way that it's going about improving the laws and also harmonizing laws amongst 
the, the region so that people can trade with each other better, but also just making it easier for a company to enter and, and set up shop. Um, I just want to un hear your, your thoughts on how and what progress you're making in that respect. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your question. Uh, is there any other uh, participant that wants to raise a question before I uh, will give the opportunity to, yeah. for the speaker to answer the question? Okay, President Tina, uh, I'm not sure President Mankolo is in. I know she has invited uh, some other people from Lesotho, from some business people. Maybe if they are in, one can maybe just share with us maybe any question that they want or any input because of, uh, I know they, they were invited to come and just listen and share some of the things because next time we will also invite the Lesotho to share some of their program with us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, President Mankole, do you have any um, question? Yes, um, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, they did come in they, uh, for quite some time, but had to log off. It was actually somebody from Lesotho and one um, amazing business one, woman and, uh, from Botswana, but um, they, they had to excuse themselves earlier on. Um, but I want, I want to believe that they'll have an opportunity. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Yes, yes. I was just saying that unfortunately they had logged on. Um, Mrs. Masire from Botswana had actually logged on and some business persons from the Chamber of Commerce in Lesotho, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, but they had to log off. Um, but I, I will definitely invite them again. Um, I just wanted to say, maybe we should be cautious. I, I understand that my colleague was um, asking a question with regards to the rule of law and the maintenance of maybe good investment governance in the continent of Africa. I don't know if this platform really has the mandate or the authority to debate such issues. Um, I, I'm worried that we may end up be, becoming very political. If we could try maybe focus on purely business and we have our similar dynamics in the sub-Sahara in the whole of Africa. And I, my colleagues will correct me. I don't know if this platform um, is the right platform to discuss the right and wrong and the rule of law. Thank you, Augustina. Okay, thank you very much, uh, President uh, Mankole. So uh, I think right now I'll give the chance for the speaker to uh, give answer to the question. Me. First yeah, off, I think uh, before, no, I think before uh, the, the speaker's answers, uh, yeah. the platform is to empower and to understand to how is the, you know, the, you know, uh, the, the political climate ac ac across the globe. And we should be, we are here to empower each other and even to understand some other issues. And uh, yeah, I, I think really that is that for, you know, um, especially what Ntate Mulubi was quoting, you know, uh, about the uh, African being the, the cradle of civilization and, and, and what colonization have done, you know, in Africa, we have to know because that is why we are not becoming pro a, a, a prosperous because of some other issues that were really labeled a, a, about us in Africa. And even what a, a President Ayla have said that, you know, you know, when we speak about coke, coke why? Why is there is such a lot of cocoa, but there is nothing in Africa and it's about brandy and we should be able to go to the roots Really, why are this tedious, uh, you know, perpetual things happening in Africa? So let us arise and somewhere, somehow, 
people who are political will, will really uh, uh, coin their political understanding. And I think a politics are also part of economics so that we can be able to know the one plus one sometimes is not two, okay, it's about three. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you yeah. very much. Maybe uh, we can. Get yeah. We can. We can continue to the uh, speaker to answer the question. Uh, first, uh, we want to ask Mr. Saul to answer the question. Okay. Th thank you very much, and also thanks for the complimentary um, 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 the compliments that I've received uh, regarding my presentation. Um, let me quote from Shakespeare. He says, reputation, reputation, reputation. Oh, I have lost my reputation. I have lost the immortal part of myself. And what remains is bestial, meaning what I'm left with once I've uh, I've lost my reputation, it's barbaric. It's 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 uncivil. Um, we 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 have in the continent what is called Brand Africa. It's an initiate initiative um, uh, project managed and initiated by Tebe Ikalafing, one of the brilliant marketing thought leaders to emerge out of Africa. Every year they do a survey across Africa and they get consumers to identify the 100 most popular brands in Africa. Last year, only 20% of the most popular brands in Africa uh, were of African origin. And then this year, instead of increasing the 20%, we have come down to only 14%, meaning Africa primarily consumes and worships uh, foreign brands. We don't have respect and sufficient appreciation for our homegrown brands. And why is it happening? It's happening simply because uh, in Africa, we don't budget enough to brand ourselves. In fact, even I, I've spent my last 20 years working for either government departments or, or state-owned entities. Uh, if they have to cut the budget, uh, they first start with marketing and communications budget. In some instances, if they want to get rid of an official who is incompetent, and but they can't fire that official, they move that official to marketing and communications. That's why as Africa, we have a brand crisis. Now we need all of us to brand the services that we are producing, to brand the products that we are manufacturing. Because a proper brand uh, adds value to, to your product or to your services. And it allows you to charge a premium price on that service. If I was to give you a very simple example, if I'll use him because he has passed on, if my if Steve, Steve Jobs announced that Apple was going to launch a new product, all over the world, people will be standing in queues so that they can be the first to go inside the shop to buy that product. They are not saying, no, I'm waiting for the product to be launched. I will assess it. Then I will decide whether I love it or I don't love it. In, in, in cities like Shanghai, they even put restrictions on the number of Apple products you can buy on the launch day. 
because people will queue the whole night, buy five items and sell four at premium prices to the people who didn't uh, cross the night with them when they were standing in those queues. That's how important uh, branding is. There was a study done in 1981 by Pepsi. They called it the Pepsi challenge. They went to a shopping mall, they blindfolded consumers and they gave them Coke and Pepsi without telling them what products were those. And when they were blindfolded, all of them said Pepsi tasted better. They didn't know it was Pepsi. Then they removed the blindfolds. They gave them the two drinks and all of them, uh, the drinks were branded and all the consumers said, no, obviously Coke tastes better than Pepsi. But when they were blindfolded, all of them uh, thought that it was Pepsi that was tasting better. For me, this shows you the importance of branding, of why it is important you should brand yourself so that ultimately uh, one, uh, your awareness, uh, customer awareness will be very high. Two, customer awareness create, uh, create the impression that your product provides value for money. Three, this increases the loyalty to, 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 to your brand, to your product. And four, it, it affinity, it develops affinity amongst your, your customers to your product. So that if there's any substitution product that can come into the market, those loyal customers will never desert you. This is what we need to do as Africa. On the question of the, the rule of law, um, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement is going to remove more than 70% of all the trade tra uh, tariffs that exist right now in Africa. So this is very key from, from January 1 next year, when the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement kicks in, then 70% of all the trade tariffs will be gone and across the entire African continent. But the other thing is that some years ago, uh, and this three project, let me talk to the three main ones, which were strategic objectives of the African Union. They were later incorporated into Agenda 2060, 2063. Uh, the first one was a rail and road infrastructure uh, program. And this was chaired by South Africa. That's why you have the Development Bank of South Africa being very active in, in other African countries. In fact, they are more impactful in other African countries than they are here at home. And my engagement with them gave me an answer why. It's simply because they only finance projects, infrastructure projects uh, that have a, a minimum budget of 1 billion rands. Now in South Africa, most of our infrastructure projects come below 1 billion rand. In fact, the last uh, project that frustrated me in my, my immediate previous life when I was working for the Houghton Growth and Development Agency, uh, AB InBev wants to build two manufacturing plants south of Johannesburg between, uh, between Ferrienaheng and, and, and Van der Bale Park. This was the offtake uh, commitment they made when they were buying over SAB Brewery. And they couldn't build those factories last year, January, simply because the substation between Ferienaheng and Van der Bale Park needs 260 uh, for it to be operational and for it to be able to generate enough uh, power for, for even surrounding companies. 
they needed 610. We went all over. We couldn't uh, raise the money because they are under, under administration. The DBSA was ready to put money into the project, but it was less than 1 billion. So that's the problem. Whereas when they go in other African countries where budgets are drafted in US dollars, it's very easy for the budget to go above. One so that's the reason. Now, the other project was the ICT infrastructure, and it was chaired by Senegal. And the last one, which is important because it speaks to the rule of law, is the, the peace, security, and development program. Because basically, we say you can't talk about peace and security until there is development in the continent. Because that's why all the militias, they kidnap our children, they give them guns, sophisticated guns like your AK-47, and yet they don't have uh, the, the, those young uh, uh, soldiers don't even have shoes. And we are saying, you can't talk about peace and security until you talk about development as a, as a vehicle to create peace uh, and security in the continent. So this program is progressing very well. And there are also other good stories like your Africa peer review mechanism, which is doing very well because African countries are opening themselves up to be assessed on, on whether they are, they, they are good uh, corporate governance uh, and, and governance of their countries and they're being assessed by external uh, um, um, uh, assessors who come into those countries. So Africa indeed is on the rise and it is up to us to believe in it, to take up the opportunities so that we can run with all this opportunity. What is, what is happening in, in Mozambique, it's very sad and SADC has to move very quickly to contain uh, uh, violence that is taking place in northern Mozambique. And why is, is, is violence taking place there? It's simply because there are resources, oil and gas resources. And who else could be interested in those resources? The story of Libya can give you an answer. The tensions around Iran can give you an answer because all these military insta instabilities are fueled by people who are looking at stealing our resources while we continue fighting amongst each other. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, so, so uh, I please uh, President Ogena to be answering the question. Hello. Well, I try to answer the question that uh, President Debbie uh, uh, made. President Debbie is possible to invest in Mozambique, as I said. We have uh, a law. We can follow this law, and we have, all, uh, of course, the institution that is in charge of promoting the in private investment. So, under the law, that is the matter if you are national or foreign people who want to invest in Mozambique. You can invest any any area. We have to identify what you want, and you can come and invest. If, if, if you are a foreign investor, you have you're supposed to invest at least fifth your project might have have to invest at least. 50,000 US dollar. That doesn't mean that you have to bring this money only. Maybe it could be in equipment. We have to register at the central bank to make sure that you brought this money because you will take uh, back a, a, a profit uh, from this money. So we have to make proof that you brought at, at the beginning 
this money. Uh, our institute can help you if you want to invest. Uh, we, we can found the uh, basic information from internet. The, uh, there, are, there are some questions that you have to be able to answer in advance. You can fill uh, for a form you have that in the internet and send it to, um, a problems here in Mozambique, as you know, uh, related with the infrastructures and the low salaries and lack of um, uh, skilled people and the um, informal market and some instability. Uh, as my previous speaker said, we have some insecurity here in Mozambique. So doesn't mean that it's not possible to invest. It is possible. Our people in general, they are harder workers, as you know. We have many, many Mozambican in, in, the, in some companies in South Africa, you know, even the agricultural sector and the mining sector, they are there, many, many Mozambican. Historically, they are there working. They, have, they are hard workers. They learn. We, of course, we have to uh, make sure that the, uh, you want to involve them. You can select what you want to do and to train them but it's possible to invest in Mozambique. We are open, we are open, we have, we are, we are, we are facing some uh, uh, natural disasters, as you know. Uh, I mean floods and things like that, but it's possible, of course, to invest in Mozambique. We are open, we are open to receive some investors. You can invest alone, you can find some partners here, it's possible. It's not, you are not obliged by law that you have to have someone who is a national here, no. Who are not um, obliged to, uh, to join with people who, who don't know, no. What you have to know if so, you, 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 you want to find someone who can invest with you, it's up to you. You can do this research until you get someone who, who trusts who can trust him. This is my brief explanation about what is necessary to do in Mozambique. Thank you. I don't know Thank if you, you understand. You, yeah. I, 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 I answered your question. Yeah. No, thanks, uh, President Renoma. Yeah. Okay. Next uh, for uh, President Ogena to answer the question. Hello again. Um, so Nigeria intends to build a competitive manufacturing sector and the government supports anti-competitive protects private property of 1995. Now the NIPC stands for Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission and it allows for the ownership of structures and businesses owned by foreigners in Nigeria, so that foreign investors can now own and control 100% of the said shares in any company, as opposed to the earlier arrangement of 40 to 60% of which, of course, 40% in favor of Nigerians, except however, in oil and gas sector, where investment is limited to joint ventures or production sharing agreements. Now, for every foreigner seeking to invest in my beautiful country, Nigeria, you must be registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission here in Nigeria and stamp duty must be paid to the Federal Inland Revenue Service, which is our official tax collecting structure here in Nigeria. Every company with foreign participation must also be registered with the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission and the business license and an expatriate quota must be obtained from the Ministry of Interior. The financial statements of the said company must be prepared annually and submitted to the Corporate Affairs Commission. Uh, like the previous speaker said, we are um, to learn more about registration processes. We can avail you with websites, we can avail you with links. Uh, just as she also mentioned, of course, there is an entry level fee in terms of 
what the company would be bringing in sum or equity in investing in Nigeria. However, we're 100% open to, to foreigners, we're 100% open to investors, and we can't wait. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much all for the answer from the uh, speakers. Is there any uh, other comment for tonight? President Rebecca, you want to have? Okay, thanks. Uh, maybe from my side, I just want to thank all the speakers and maybe from uh, my input, because it's not questions, I just want to request Mr. Sol, maybe in his uh, study, I request him also to add uh, the infrastructure side of uh, his study so that we can be brought when we do other things. The way she, he presented, uh, especially on the logistical part where you find you buy something in South Africa, you want to post to Niger, but you have to via London first. So let's have a study that will assist us as uh, Africa on how we can uh, develop our roads, our rails, and even our logistical uh, site. It's just an extra job, uh, Mr. Sol, that I'm giving you, but I know we will also continue to engage and then today, it won't be the last day that you share some of the presentation, some of the work that you are doing with us on this platform. We will invite you again. And I want to even uh, thank uh, the presidents of uh, Mozambique, President Pilenoma, for a well uh, presentation from his, his side of Mozambique. But as the team, we continuously communicating, we continuously engaging, which we will always do. President Ogena, thank you very much for a well thought uh, presentation of Nigeria. And then we also have a document which we will continue to uh, discuss as a team of infrastructure with uh, Tina and the other two presidents who couldn't uh, look in today, but we know we are a team that will continue working together especially with the team of uh, real estate and agriculture. So from my side, I just want to say uh, our next session, uh, Tina, we'll have a session on the 11th of October. And in the next session, uh, the first country that we will uh, request maybe to be part, it will be Lesotho, and then we will even have other uh, countries that will come and share with us some of their programs of infrastructure so that when we have our uh, combined program for Africa, we have a full uh, program where we understand all our country's uh, uh, background. And especially even what uh, Mr. Sol has presented today, it gave us uh, an opportunity to even have a broader view on what uh, our Africa continental uh, free trade will entail and we'll prepare even when it kicks off in January, we are ready on our, when we want to do anything within our countries in Africa. And to you, thank you very much for being a good moderator today. And I want even to say to our uh, Deputy President of Africa, President uh, Devi, thank you very much for all your support always. President Aila, our global president, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, President Mankole from Lesotho. I saw also President Pardo from uh, Botswana. Uh, he was uh, in, and also other president who I can't see in our uh, participants, but thank you very much. Also all the guests that have looked in. And then if uh, you want to see more of uh, other sectors of uh, WWLC, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, where you can even watch even today's uh, session. It will be on the YouTube. And then uh, we have even our uh, person who's doing our administration, our president, let's say, or whoever wants to know more about WWLC, you're welcome to ask and to share with us what you 
want to know how you want to be involved in WWFC. We thank, I thank you very much, yeah. Thank you very much for all your uh, support also from President Rebecca. You are really an awesome host for tonight. We hope this uh, will be continuous. This is the start. And uh, I believe that this is going to be a great for all of us. This is uh, really, really a good start for us. So we come mm -hmm. to an end of our session for tonight. Uh, thank you very much again for every speaker and also all the guests <laughs> coming. And uh, as, as we said that it will be, we will be in the uh, YouTube channel, World Woman Leading Chain. And then thank you. We're going to close this conference with the prayer. I think I will invite uh, President Chase, I think, is there any? Uh, we can ask President Mankole. And okay. then after here, President Lesoho will just play the song and we will close. Okay. But we want to see uh, Mr. Sol. Mr. Sol, we want to we see you. Him. We saw him when he was giving answers. <laughs> Okay, President yeah. Mankole, you can pray for us. Thank you, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this good deliberation today, Father. Father, give us, continue to give us wisdom, continue to give us wisdom, unity, continue, O oh Lord, Father, to bind this entire world together with one love, with one vision, and one prosperity by transforming economic changes, by impacting women, and families by impacting the world for a better future for us all. We thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you, Father, for your love. Amen. Thank you Amen. very much. Amen. Our song. We close with our, we call it our national anthem of WWLC. Can we all just uh, wait for our song and after you can leave the session after our song? We are the woman leading change, leading change. We are the woman leading change, leading change. We are the woman leading change, leading change. We are the woman leading change for our people, for our countries, for everyone in the world love peace needed in this world endurance needed in this world forgiveness needed in this world unity needed in this world yes african woman Leading change, Antarctican woman, leading change. Yes, Asia, woman leading change. Yes, Australia, woman leading change. Yes, Europe, woman leading change. Yes, North America, yes, South America. Woman leading change, Calera do Fella, Calera do Fella. Woman leading change, Calita bo Fella, Calita bo Fella. Woman leading change, Gotando Pella, Gotando Pella. Woman leading change, yes, Indonesia. Yes, Ayla, yes, Ayla, woman leading change. Yes, Indonesia, we thank you, world woman leading change. Wow. Thank you, very much. Very much. Thank you. Thank you for the songwriter of this song, the vice president of WWRC Africa, President Debbie Dineo. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs>
the Thank founder you. of the song. We should, right. we have to add your name. Thank you, President Debbie, like that <laughs> in the song. Thank you. Bye. Orban Tete, Kulubi, Ladies, if it's okay, President Debbie, President Debbie and President Rebecca, would you mind Hello. staying on, please? Hello, Dr. Ayla.